the Round County Clerk's Office continues to refuse to issue marriage licenses, even after the clerk's appeal was denied. It's another fall day in the bluegrass, hey, but I do have changes just in time for the weekend. Some storms are on the way. We'll detail it coming up. A United States Air Force captain from Lexington has died in Afghanistan. The details just ahead. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon to you. Welcome to WKYT News at 4. I'm Amber Philpot reporting. Jennifer has the afternoon off. Our spectacular run of early fall weather has a few more days left in the tank before some changes blow in for us. This is a live picture now of downtown Lexington from one of our sky cams. We want to check in first with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Another great day out there. Yeah, it really is. Those temperatures stuck into the 70s yet again today, Amber. You've got the low humidity levels out there again, and the clouds that we were noticing a little earlier in the day beginning to thin out a little bit across the Lexington area as of right now. Temperature uh, actually dropping in Lexington even though the clouds are clearing out. Yeah, airport thermometer is a little on the funky side. Northeasterly wind at around 10 miles per hour right now. We look across the entire region. 73 in the Mount Sterling, 75 Richmond, Frankfurt up a degree over the last hour to 76. Most areas again today. Low 70s, Eastern Kentucky, middle 70s into parts of the Bluegrass region. Cloud cover. We've been noticing a little bit of cloud cover. Notice how it's a little thinner across parts of southern Kentucky, mainly confined to the northern parts of the area, and certainly nothing like what we had yesterday. If you're out this evening, hey, it's a nice one again. Right after sunset, you know the routine. We drop it quickly through the 60s. As we look ahead to the next several days, weekend is just around the corner. I've got the threat for some showers and thunderstorms creeping back into our picture. Amber will highlight that with a brand new hour by hour forecast when I come back here in 15 minutes. All right, we will see you then, Chris. Thank you. A Kentucky clerk is once again refusing to issue marriage licenses despite an order from a federal appeals court upholding a judge's order to issue the licenses. The battle stems from Davis's, Kim Davis, rather, refusal to comply with a Supreme Court ruling legalizing same sex marriage nationwide. WKYT Sam Smith is in Moorhead to tell us what happens next in the case. It's our top story at four. Protesters have been out here all day speaking out against Kim Davis's decision to not issue any marriage licenses. Davis is in the middle of a lawsuit because of that decision. The federal lawsuit was filed by two same sex and two opposite sex couples. U.S. District Judge David Bunning ordered Davis to issue the licenses. He delayed that ruling until August 31st or until the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals issued a ruling. Well, that ruling came down yesterday, denying the clerk's appeal. The ACLU says religious liberty doesn't allow public officials to deny government services based on personal beliefs. Deputy Clerk here, Nathan Davis, told me the office believes that delay is in effect until August 31st and they will not issue licenses. The office is represented by the Liberty Council. They say they plan on filing an extension past the August 31st date so the office can continue to not issue licenses while the lawsuit is pending. Protesters outside the courthouse want to see this resolved. Um, they're running out of options, and all it does is prolong the agony for the couples that want to get married. The office was closed today for about an hour, from 12 to 1, as the computers in the clerk's office were being upgraded. In Round County, Sam Smith, WKYT. A rally for equality is scheduled for Saturday from 9 to 12 on the courthouse lawn. We have learned a United States Air Force captain from Lexington has died in Afghanistan. The Department of Defense says 27-year-old Captain Matthew Rowland died this week when his vehicle was attacked near Camp Antonic, Afghanistan. Rowland was assigned to the 23rd Special Tactics Squadron at Hurlburt Field, Florida. Staff Sergeant Forrest Sibley was also killed in that attack. Rowland was a Lexington Catholic graduate. You're going to hear from his former coach and teachers on WKYT News at 5. Today marks a somber anniversary here in Lexington. It has been nine years since the Com Air Flight 5191 crash at Bluegrass Airport. The pilot took off from the wrong runway, one that was too short for a safe takeoff. 49 people died in that crash. Only the co-pilot, Jim Polhinky, survived. Coming up on WKYT News at 530, we'll take you to the memorial that's become a place of remembrance for the victims at the UK Arboretum. We are working on a number of other stories for you on WKYT starting at 430. Sam Dick joins us now from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Hi, Sam. 
Good afternoon, Amber. A Lexington police officer accused of misconduct for repeatedly shoving a restrained suspect entered an Alford plea this morning. Now, that means he's not admitting he is guilty of harassment, but he thinks there is enough evidence to convict him. The alleged misconduct happened on Richmond Road back on January 13th. After police conducted an internal investigation, Officer Norris was charged with harassment and misconduct, both misdemeanors. The Commonwealth dropped the misconduct charge this morning. We'll have more on what this means for Officer Norris ahead on WKYT News at 430. Students receiving an important lesson on bullying this morning. Judy and Dennis Shepard visited Fayette County School students to talk about bullying and how it can be prevented. The couple runs the Matthew Shepard Foundation, named in honor of their son. He was attacked and killed in 1998 because he was gay. The Shepherds say social media has made it even more challenging to fight bullying. You'll hear what they had to say to students coming up on WKYT News at 5 o'clock. That's a quick look at some of the news in progress. Amber, back to you. Sam, thank you. Now to some stories making headlines across the nation at four. Family and friends of the journalist shot and killed on live television yesterday are honoring the pair while struggling with feelings of grief and shock. The father of Allison Parker vows action to prevent future tragedies. Polo Sandoval has the story now from Virginia. Allison Parker was just 24 years old. She loved her job as a reporter at WDBJ and her boyfriend, who also worked at the station. I'm sorry. I her father is inconsolable. You know, my feelings went from from numbness yesterday to, to when I found out to to abject grief. Andy Parker is also angry. Are you finished? The man who killed Allison had a history of anger issues, according to some who worked with him, but he was never charged. Vester Flanagan was fired from numerous stations, including at WDBJ. He legally obtained the gun he used in the shooting. Smarter people than I am can figure out a way to do background checks and prevent mentally unstable, crazy people from getting guns. Slain photographer Adam Ward joined WDBJ right after graduating from Virginia Tech in 2011. The 27 year old photographer was engaged to be married to the morning show producer. He'd achieved his broadcasting goals and soon planned to marry and move so he could begin a new adventure. She has family around her right now and is really doing the best she can to cope. This will be a long, long recovery for her. The 41 year old shooter is dead. He killed himself before he could be captured and sent hate filled diatribes to ABC News and on social media. But in southwestern Virginia, there is love and grief for Adam and Allison. I'd get a text from her saying, Dad, you know, how, you know, what'd you think of my package and all that? And, and I'll never hear that again. And I just, you know, it just it crushes my soul. In Moneta, Virginia, I'm Polo Sandoval. An attorney for a former University of Cincinnati police officer charged with murder is asking the court to move the trial out of the Queen City. Ray Tensing is facing murder and voluntary manslaughter charges in the July death of Samuel DeBose. Tensing's lawyer argues that he can't get a fair trial in Cincinnati because of extensive pretrial publicity and what he describes as inflammatory comments by a prosecutor. President Obama is in New Orleans today to mark the 10th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. He is touring neighborhoods affected and meeting with families still recovering from the devastation. The president will also meet with the city's mayor to discuss rebuilding efforts. He's also scheduled to visit a newly opened community center in the Lower Ninth Ward to deliver talk on economic innovation in that city. There are millions of dollars worth of unredeemed Radio Shack gift cards out there, and the bankrupt company may have to swap all of them out for cash. That's ahead in Money Watch. A stop off the interstate leads you to the world's poshest gas station. I'm Jonathan Vigliotti in southwest England. I'll take you inside coming up.